continuing with our Babylon JS tutorials allowing you to create uh, 3D scenes in your web browser and today we're going to be looking at creating scenes in Blender 3D and exporting them for use in your web browser using Babylon JS and luckily Babylon JS has an exporter for Babylon or for Blender 3D. I'd like to mention that I am running uh, Blender 2.71 and also, uh, this is not a Blender tutorial. This is just on how to import stuff that you make in Blender. So I'm assuming you already know how to use Blender. Um, so let's go ahead and first thing I do is let's just add some stuff to this Blender scene. I'm going to, uh, well actually before we do that, let's go to our web browser. Let's go to babylonjs.com. Go to downloads, which brings you to their GitHub page. And we'll go to exporters. Blender, and right here you can see there is an IO export Blender or Babylon.py. It's a Python script. Uh, there's also this new uh, Tower of Babel.py, which was added six go days ago. I have not had a chance to look at what that is, but today we're going to be looking at the export Babylon PY. So you can click that, click raw, and then download this Python script. Then you can go into Blender. Go to File, User Preferences, under Add-ons, click Install from File, find where you have downloaded that file, and click Install from File. And then our little search bar here, we're going to go Babylon, we'll type that into Search, and Enable the Babylon Importer Exporter. And then, if you want, you can click uh, Save User Settings, and that will keep that enabled. Otherwise, when you exit out of Blender, when you come back in, that will be unchecked and you'll have to go back in there and check it every time if you want to export a Babylon scene. Um, so clicking Save User Settings will save that so you don't have to do that every time. Now that we've imported the exporter, or loaded the add-on that is the exporter, let's just create a very basic scene. I'm going to uh, move this cube up, add in a plane, scale it up. I'll uh, just I'll just randomly create some cubes here and maybe rotate some of them just to give us something. So obviously you can import and create much more complex uh, scenes and models and Blender will import most uh, of the common formats out there for models. So if you get a model uh, that was created in another program, uh, you should be able to import it to here. Uh, so we have that. The default scene has this light here, this lamp. Let's move that over there and clone it over here and give each one a different color just to liven up our scene. We'll make one of them a blue color and we'll make the other one a reddish color. And if we hit F12, that's what it looks like in Blender. Um, we can, oh, there we go, the camera's kind of close there. But uh, luckily we'll be able to move the camera around inside uh, the Babylon inside your browser once you import it with Babylon JS. Again, um, it will import the entire scene, including any cameras you have, any lighting you have. Uh, if you're adding uh, textures, we're not going to go over that today, but you want to use UV textures, and you'll have to make sure that the uh, uh, JPEG files or PNGs or whatever format you use are appropriate located, appropriately located. Um, but now that we got this basic scene, let's go ahead and while our cursor's over the 3D view here, hit spacebar, type in BAB to bring up our Babylon uh, exporter. Click on that. There is only one option in here, which is if you want to export only the current layer. We're not going to check that because we're going to export the whole scene. I'm going to go to where I have uh, my tutorials that I've been working on, and we'll call this one B scene for Blender scene. And it'll automatically append to that dot Babylon. We'll export that. And now let's go into our editor here. Real quick, I'm going to get out of Vim here. And if we, I'm in the folder that I just exported that file to, uh, which we call bscene.babylon. If I enter to bring open that up in a text editor such as Vim, you can see that it is a plain text file, which actually a lot of 3D models are. But this isn't just a model, this is the whole scene. So everything we just exported, the cameras, the lights, the names of the lights, any materials, it also exports physics. 
If you wanted to use uh, set physics in Blender, uh, you can do so. I'm not going to go over that today, but just as I talked in the previous tutorial, you'll have to import the Canon JS uh, engine if you want the physics to work. And they act a little different than they do in Blender, so they don't always, you don't always get the results that you want. But if you want some basic physics uh, and you set them in Blender, they will export into here as well. And so you could actually modify your scene in here. Uh, don't know why you would do that unless you accidentally deleted your Blender file. But uh, you can actually import this back in with the same plugin that we just added on to Blender. So if you forgot to save your Blender file and you have this Babylon file, you can import it and start modifying it and then export it again. But I just want to show you it's a very basic JSON format. If you've done a lot of stuff with JavaScript, you've probably come across JSON. It's a very common format, very easy to use, very easy to read. And I just wanted to show you that. Um, now let's go into our script, our HTML file. I call it 04.html. Right now I have the basic HTML tags in there, our HTML tag, header tag, title, script, importing the Babylon JS script. And again, if you want to have physics, you have to import the Canon JS physics. Uh, some very basic CSS, which all this really does is get rid of any padding margins uh, and sets our game or scene to be the full width and height of our windows. Basically, it will fill up the full browser. So that's what that's doing there. Uh, inside our body tags, we're created a canvas, and which is going to be used to render out our uh, Babylon JS scene. I gave it the idea of render canvas. Uh, and then inside our actual script tags here, I, the only thing I left from previous tutorials is this resizer for when you're resizing the window, the scene will resize properly. So let's go ahead and start writing out our code. I'm going to create an object first here, our canvas object, a canvas variable here that we're going to point to an element on our page. So document, which is our, our web page, it's the document we're looking at right now. We're going to say get an element by ID, and again, this is case sensitive, so capital E, B, and I there. And we're going to say the render, uh, render canvas, because that's what we called it. That's the ID equals this. We're saying get the element by its ID, what ID this there, and don't forget your semicolon at the end of the line there. So now, anytime in our script, if we call canvas with lowercase c, or however you name it, you can call it whatever you want within reason. Um, it will look at that canvas element. And we'll do the same thing for an engine. We're gonna create our rendering engine, and we're gonna say it's a new engine, look at our Babylon script that we imported, and use its engine function to create a new engine. And we're gonna to say to use the canvas element that we just created. Next, we're going to load our scene. And instead of creating a new scene from scratch, we're going to use a scene loader, which is uh, already built into the Babylon JS script. So all we have to do is say Babylon, again, all capital there. That's saying to look at the function inside the Babylon JS script and find the function called scene loader. Use that scene loader and run from within that the load option. And here we're going to set the name blank, just double quotes there. Um, just keep simple. We're only going to have one scene here. If you have more than one scene, you're going to label them different things. We're just going to leave that blank for right now. Uh, but we want to give it our Babylon file that we looked at earlier, the JSON file, which we called uh, bscene.babylon. If you ever get an error that says um, unable to load, no loader found for this file or something like that, you probably spelt or put the wrong file name there. <laughs> I've come across that. I got the Y and the L backwards and I'm looking at my code and could not figure out why I did wrong. And it's just, it was a typo there. It was looking for a file that didn't exist so it didn't know how to load it. And my browser was telling me, um, the console in my browser was telling me, I don't know how to load this file. And I'm going, what do you mean you don't know how to load it? Anyway, next we're gonna tell it to use this engine that we created here. Because again, you, you can have more than one on a page. And we're going to say new scene, um, and that will create a variable called new scene. Let's close out this function here. 
Uh, but this is saying, okay, we're going to load this while it's loading, then run this function. The scene is going to be called this, but we're actually going to relabel it here uh, to scene. So var scene, that way anywhere in our script, we can just call scene and get it. Again, you can have more than one scene and you might use this function more than once. And that's why we're doing it this way in a way. Yeah. Okay, so now from here on out, anytime we want to call our scene, we'll call it scene with a capital S. That's just how I wrote it. You can write it with a lowercase s. Just be consistent with whatever you do. But we're going to say scene execute when ready. I'll give you I'll give you a guess. I'll give you one guess on what this does. Well, when the scene is ready, well, and then execute this function. So basically it waits for the full scene file. The, this file here, which is our scene, any other files need for it, uh, to download from the website, which a very basic scene should only take a second or two. Larger scenes might take longer. You could create loads, load, uh, you know, a process bar. We're not going to go over that in this tutorial. Um, but it's saying once that's downloaded, ready to go, then run this function. And now we're going to take our scene and we're going to stick the active camera. Well, you know, I'm not going to do that yet. We're actually going to leave this function right uh, there, blank, as far as that. Let's see. Make sure we write that out correctly. Yep. Close our braces and our parentheses. But in here, we're going to put our, our engine. So again, we're going to call our engine element that we created, again, up here and that we're using for this scene. And we're going to say, uh, render or loop and we want to spell things properly so we probably want to put an n here instead of an a so run render or loop and this we talked about in previous videos in this series and basically this is just a function that every time the render loop happens it's going to do something we're going to say scene dot render so we're going to render the scene, but you could do other things as in a previous tutorial, we used it to rotate objects. Again, this does is affected by the speed of your machine. So if timing is important, you may not want to use this for certain things. Um, and that's it as far as importing the scene. That's all we need. I mean, 10, maybe 15 lines of code to create our or import our scene. Let's go back to our web browser here and refresh that page. And there is our scene with our cubes and our lights. Right now, you can't do anything with the mouse or keyboard. So let's say we want to create a very basic fly-through camera. Uh, in Babylon JS, they call it the free a free cam, which is the default type of camera. So we don't need to even say make it a free cam. We're going to assign controls to that camera. And we're going to do that once the scene is ready. So once the scene has loaded, we're going to say scene.active camera dot attach control. And we're going to attach that to our canvas element. And what this does is spell things right again, camera. So we're saying, okay, take our scene and find the active camera. Now we didn't create a camera in our script here, although you can if you want to create a camera. You can have more than one camera and change from one camera to another um, or have multiple players theoretically and have a view for each player. Um, but we didn't create one in our script here, so where is it going? To, what active camera is it looking for? Well, it's this camera. So you notice when the page loaded, it automatically, we got the view from here. So wherever you put this camera will be the first view when the page loads, unless you set another camera. And what we're saying is take that camera, so look at the scene, find the active camera, and then attach controls to it using the canvas element. We'll save that, come back in here into our browser, hit F5 to refresh, and now I can use the mouse to move around and my arrow keys also to move around. And that is our scene from Blender. And of course, right now, if I hit F12 and then I hit F5 to refresh the page, you'll notice that there is, you'll get an error that says uh, that there's a manifest file missing. The manifest file is not something that is necessary, 
although you will always get this error in the console if you don't have one. But what it does is it adds um, uh, a few options, tells the browser a few things that can uh, improve its loading time. So let's quickly create a manifest file, or at least look at one that I have already. Uh, I'm going to open up one that I've already created called um, boxes.manifest. And we can actually copy this all over perfectly, but okay, so we can say inside the manifest file right here, I'm, I think there might be other options, but these are the options I usually have in there. The version of your scene or game. Um, and then enable scene offline, either true or false, enable textures offline, true or false. Okay, so what this does is when before your scene loads, Babylon.js checks for a manifest file. If, it, if there is one, it checks these things and sets them. So the first time you load up the game or scene or whatever, it's going to load everything that you need. Within that same browser, if I go back to that same page, and I have enabled offload, uh, offline mode set to true. Same with textures, which I do have set to true here. What that will do is it won't need to download everything again. It will load it, uh, it will basically store it in your browser and then later on reload it from there so you can have an offline mode uh, once you've already loaded it from online. And the only time that it will that re-download that stuff is if the version number changes. Now I set this to false and I probably should set this false too although we're not working with textures in this example and uh, I'll show you why. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to highlight, copy, and so the name of the manifest file like our scene is called bscene.babylon create another file with that and then do dot uh, manifest at the end. I'll import that same exact thing from here but here I'm going to set this offline mode to true and save it, which I don't recommend while you're actually still developing the game, and this is why. Uh, so I come in here, I hit F5 now. We don't get that error in the console, so let me go ahead and close the console here. Everything looks fine. Let me go back into my Babylon scene here, and I'm going to, or my Blender scene here, and I'm going to add a sphere and I'm going to grab it, I'm going to put it right there, you can see it's in the camera view uh, and I'm going to now again just hit spacebar BAB, hit enter, hit enter, I just resave the scene, it's that simple, come back in here at F5 and where's my sphere? I don't see the sphere. The reason for that is the version number didn't change and I have it set to offline mode true so it didn't re-download the scene so I get a faster loading scene if it was more complex because it wouldn't have to re-download it from a server if you are running this off a server rather than locally. It will store it inside your browser and load it from there. So what I am going to do is I'm going to come in here and I am going to set this to false and this to false. Um, so this is a great thing to have set to true once you put it up on a web server for people to use. It will uh, lower the load on your server, lower the traffic that's needed, and improve the speed of loading if you have those set to true. But since we're still working on it here on my local machine, uh, now that I've done that, I can come back in here, hit F5, and you can see the sphere is right there. And now anytime I refresh the page, it will reload everything since I have those set to false. So all depending if you're still working on it, might want to set them to false. Once you have kind of a, a set you know, version that you want to put out there, you can put it out there. And then um, you know, as you make changes, change the version number and then that's when uh, people will get updates. So it's very a very uh, smart way of doing things, I think. Uh, so again, I can now uh, just add a few spheres here, hit spacebar, Babylon exporter, enter, enter. I just overwrote that file, hit F5, and you can see the other spheres I just added. I can come in here again, I can say monkey, I can add a monkey. Uh, move the monkey on the x-axis, Z, rotate it on Z, so there's my monkey. I'll hit space, add, or oh, I just added another monkey. <laughs> I'll move that to where the camera can maybe see it at some point anyway. And now I'm going to Babylon export, come in here, whoops, refresh my browser, and there are the monkey heads. So you can see how easily, if you have a web server set up, 
all I have to do is export, and every time I export, as long as I have my manifest file set to false, or if I change the version number, as soon as I export that, boom, the scene is automatically updated uh, to anybody accessing it. All they have to do is refresh their page. And uh, that's it. So again, uh, you can add uh, materials to these objects, colors. Again, if you're going to add textures, you want to use UV mapping. Otherwise, it won't come through. That's true with a lot of uh, game environments. Uh, UV mapping is usually used for games. Um, and there's a lot more you can do, but I just wanted to show you the basics today. Again, Canon JS will help you add physics, but we just got this basic free cam, a fly-through cam. And uh, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed these tutorials. That's it for, for this month. Uh, this is what my Patreon voters voted for were these Babylon JS uh, tutorials. And um, we'll see. I might do more in the future if my patreon uh, supporters vote for that so if you are a patreon supporter of mine and you want to see more babylon js let me know and i'll be sure to do more if you're not a patreon supporter think about uh, going to patreon.com forward slash melx1000 should be a link in the description of this video to it and uh, there you can support me on a monthly basis, uh, either a few dollars a month or more, whatever you think I deserve for the tutorials I put out. I do a lot of tutorials, and if you enjoy them, uh, I, I ask that you support me. And I appreciate your views either way, and I hope that you have a great day. I'll also visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. should also be a link to that in the description. Again, have a great day. I would like to take a moment to thank the following Patreon supporters for helping make this video possible.